My boyfriend is a forensic doctor. To save his first love, who had always been honest, he committed perjury to protect the real culprit, placing the fugitive's DNA into the decapitated female corpse. Once this case is closed, he plans to bid farewell to his career as a forensic doctor. Little does he know, the first body he dissected since becoming a doctor was my mother's. The last two bodies were mine and our unborn child's. Chapter 1 The air in the autopsy room was filled with a chill. Leo pulled out a test tube from his bag. I floated beside him, watching as he calmly took out a cotton swab, dipped it into the milky white liquid inside, and inserted it into the decapitated female corpse in front of him. I knew that tube contained the fugitive's DNA. Once Leo completed these tasks, this murder case would turn into just one of the many homicides committed by the fugitive. The real culprit would go free, and his first love, Tessa, would be saved. My soul let out a massive scream. Don't do it. But he couldn't hear me at all. The overhead light illuminated his furrowed brow, gripping my heart. Efficiently, he continued to destroy other pieces of evidence on the body. Tears streamed down my face, as this decapitated body was mine. The distinctive mole on my body had been violently mutilated, and Leo didn't recognize me. Yes, he thought I was avoiding him in anger, unaware that I had already tragically died at someone else's hands. It was ridiculous. In the past, Leo would get jealous if he saw me getting too close to someone else. But now, for Tessa's sake, he had destroyed my innocence with his own hands. Just half an hour ago, someone had kidnapped Tessa, forcing Leo to make a choice. You were in charge of the latest decapitated female body case, right? Now, your beloved mistress is in my hands. Do as we say, and she'll return to you unharmed. Otherwise, I wouldn't mind having one more decapitated female body. Think about it. On the phone screen, Tessa's face was full of bruises, tears streaming down her face, tied to a chair. I saw Leo's hand shaking as he held the phone, but he still pretended to be calm and said. I work in this profession to speak for the dead. I won't commit perjury. I will call the police. Chapter 2 Leo is honest and always upholds justice. In past cases, no matter how much families tried to bribe or beg him, he remained unmoved. I once joked that Leo was like an emotionless dissecting machine. I asked. If one day, you were to dissect my body, could you avenge me by showing compassion? Would you make an exception? He shook his head with a smile. I wouldn't dissect you. How could one harm the person they love? I always believed he wouldn't waver for anyone or anything. Tessa cried out. Yes, don't worry about me. Slap. After Tessa was slapped, she was violently stripped of her clothes. Leo's Adam's apple bobbed up and down in excitement, finally roaring. Don't touch her. What do you want me to do, I agree. Erase the evidence on the body, and we will give you a tube of the fugitive's bodily fluid. Just put it into the female corpse, disguising it as one of the many murders committed by this fugitive. Not difficult, right, great forensic doctor, after all, you are a professional. Would he still do this if he knew that body was mine? I actually hesitated. Chapter 3 Leo made an excuse to send the assistant away. When he finished everything, the assistant came in just in time. He began the dissection coldly, following the protocol as he did with every other task. But when he saw the fetus inside me, he froze, his fingers holding the scalpel trembling uncontrollably. Perhaps, he was shocked that he could do something so despicable to a mother. Would he ever repent for carrying all this sin for Tessa? The assistant couldn't help but sigh. So young, pregnant too, what a pity, one body, two lives lost. Her husband must be devastated. Her head was even cut off. If she hadn't left a DNA sample, it would be difficult to identify her. But in reality, my husband not only wasn't devastated, he pushed me into the abyss with his own hands. A shudder from the depths of my soul left me trembling all over. He said. Everyone has their fate. All we can do is help her find the truth and rest in peace. It turned out these words could also be faked. 
Perhaps sensing the stiffness in Leo's words, the assistant tried to lighten the mood. I remember you love children the most. When are you and Claire planning to have one? At the mention of my name, his brow furrowed even deeper, visible frustration. If I hadn't been with her, we probably would have had a child by now. The assistant paused, quickly adding. Claire is. Sorry, with technology being so advanced now, there must be a way. But if I hadn't been with him, I should have had a child by now, right? Leo was always busy, so busy that even after the results of our premarital checkup came out, I was the one who went to pick them up. The cicadas outside the hospital that day had never been so loud. I held that report in my hand, sinking into silence. The doctor said. Your husband's condition makes the probability of conception very low. Even if you manage to get pregnant, the chance of miscarriage is high. But Leo loved children so much, he had been looking forward to it for so long, being a perfectionist, how could he accept it? To spare his fragile emotions, I tore the report to pieces. When Leo asked about the results, I lowered my head and said. I accidentally lost the report on the way here, but there's something I want to tell you. I might have trouble getting pregnant. Can we work on it slowly? At that moment, my breath stopped, waiting motionless for Leo's reaction. As expected, the corners of Leo's eyes reddened. I rushed over to hug him, but he didn't move. After a long silence, his murmurs sounded in my ear. I still have work to do, you go to sleep first. Chapter 4 I knew his unit had already finished work early that day, and that night, my mood was as gloomy as the moon obscured by clouds outside the window. Countless thoughts emerged in my mind like bamboo shoots after the rain. But when I woke up the next day, I saw that Leo had already bought breakfast, handed me warm milk, and softly said. Good morning. At that moment, all the grievances were washed away by this cup of warm milk. I felt like I hadn't misjudged him. In fact, it proved that Leo really had fertility issues. Several times, even if I got pregnant, it ended in a biochemical pregnancy. After repeated torment, I resigned from my job and secretly prepared food therapy for him at home. Diving into the kitchen every morning, brewing Chinese medicine that was more bitter than life itself. Then, I would act coy, tricking him into drinking it under the guise of joint treatment. When I detected the pregnancy again, afraid of another disappointment, I planned to wait for three stable months before telling him. But I never got the chance. Me and that little life ultimately froze on that cold autopsy table. All of this couldn't compare to his first love. As Leo cleaned up everything, he seemed like a lost soul. When he returned home, Tessa was sitting in the stairwell, tears welling up as she looked at him. Tessa struggled to stand up, but her legs gave way, and she fell into Leo's arms. Leo slightly lowered his head, reaching out to hold Tessa's bent legs, effortlessly lifting her in a princess carry. Inside the house, the two of them faced each other, as if multiple emotions were intertwining in the air, blending into a complex atmosphere. They didn't hurt you, did they? Leo set her down, asking with concern. Tessa weakly nodded. No, I told them, if I can't be with you, I'd rather die. You'll avenge me when the time comes. Leo placed his index finger on Tessa's lips. No, you won't die. My heart suddenly clenched. So this was how Leo got nervous. Is this something I would never see in my lifetime, not with Tessa? After a moment of silence, Leo said. I might not be able to work as a forensic doctor in the future. Tessa cupped his handsome face. It's okay, no one will find out. You've done it seamlessly. Chapter 5 from the first day I met Leo, his obsession was to become an outstanding forensic doctor. But now, for Tessa, he unexpectedly gave it up easily. Do you know? When I saw the child in the body's belly, it felt like I was facing my own child, trembling all over. Just picking up the scalpel, that image fills my mind. I'm afraid I won't be able to work as a forensic doctor anymore. Tessa visibly flinched. She was pregnant? Then she quickly regained her composure, obediently burying her head in Leo's chest. When we have children in the future, you won't think like this anymore. I always knew Leo had a pure white jasmine flower in his heart, 
his first love from ten years ago. I could witness such a scene, and the pain rushed in like a tide, engulfing me. Leo ultimately broke his promise. That day, Leo couldn't come home from work in time, so he called me to find a file on his computer. In the past, I never touched his things. But that day, I found many photos of unfamiliar girls on his computer. In fact, Leo had changed his computer several times, and even the current one was bought by me. However, he still bothered to save this pile of photos on the computer. Looking at the girl who bore a striking resemblance to me, I was stunned for a long, long time. Leo's voice on the phone sounded somewhat panicked. What did you see? With a lump in my throat, I tremblingly sent him the file, finally swallowing that lump down. Nothing. Being with Leo was not easy, and I never dared to break through that thin layer of paper. I knew Tessa was Leo's childhood sweetheart, and also his regretful first love. Chapter 6 Young Leo gave all his impulses to her. But she left without saying a word, moving far away with her mother, cutting off all contact with Leo. I was an orphan, relying on sheer courage to pursue Leo. How could I compare myself to her? Leo came back early that night, and I had even planned how to pretend I knew nothing about what I found. Instead, he loosened his tie and embraced me tightly. I don't understand what love is, but I know, I want to be with you. Our hearts pressed tightly together, Leo's breath brushing against my neck. I just want to live a good life with you. I don't want anything else. You'll always be with me, right? I nodded, falling into his tenderness once again. People say a man's love brain only has room for one love in his lifetime. Even if the love he gives me is clear and rational, it's still love. I was like a blind person pretending to be blind, covering my ears to love him. But everything changed drastically after Leo's parents died in a car accident. That woman came back, becoming Leo's indispensable right-hand woman. Leo's parents lost control of their car on the road and plunged off a cliff. After this incident, Leo fell into a deep depression. I didn't know how to comfort him, so I could only watch as he exhaustedly dealt with the messy affairs left by his parents' company. Just as he was at his wit's end, Tessa appeared at the board meeting as the largest shareholder apart from his parents. She stood under the bright lights, her face shining like a star, extending her hand to Leo and saying. I will help you through this. Her appearance was quite different from ten years ago, exuding more charm and intellectual beauty. I saw Leo's eyes, which had been calm for so long, suddenly light up. His return home grew later and later, with an increasing frequency of overtime. The meal I prepared the night before remained untouched when I woke up the next day. Chapter 7 I know that some things have slowly deteriorated, just like the overnight leftovers on this table. Compared to the bright and beautiful first love, I, whose figure was altered due to medication, really had nothing to compare. He and Tessa, a reunion after a long separation, a regret that defeated time constraints. Leo never actively kissed me, even when I kissed him, he kept his eyes open. As the wedding day approached, he told me that his parents had just died and it wasn't appropriate to get married, that we should wait a little longer. No one knew what he was waiting for. He often spaced out while smoking, staring absent-mindedly at something. In that haze, I watched his exquisite profile, like a fleeting dream. Curious about what he was thinking, I took the cigarette from his hand and jokingly said. Let me try it too. He ruffled my hair, smiling as he extinguished the cigarette. You're not allowed to touch this thing. Later, when I was with my best friend, I asked. Does he really not love me? My best friend, seasoned in worldly matters, said. People in jobs like theirs may naturally be cold. Watching the cigarette in my friend's hand, I lit one too. As the smoke curled around, all I could see in my mind were images of Leo. It wasn't until my friend nudged me. Who are you thinking about so deeply? In that moment, I had a sudden realization, like being struck by lightning. Leo at that time must have been like me, yearning for a love that was out of reach. No pain compares to the dull realization of unrequited love. And before me, Leo lifted Tessa's beautifully sculpted face and kissed her. In that moment, he closed his eyes. Turns out Leo could take initiative, just not with me. 
After the kiss, Tessa's face was already streaked with tears, she asked. If it had been me by your side all along, would you have been happier? I thought Leo would unequivocally say yes, but he glanced at Tessa with his deep eyes, remaining silent. Tessa, tactful as ever, changed the subject. Have you completely broken up with her? Leo leaned back against the sofa, burying his head, his emotions unclear. No, I haven't made up my mind yet. Tessa moved closer to Leo. She has someone else too, right? You shouldn't hesitate. Chapter 8 I don't understand why Leo lied, because we had already broken up. The last time we met, due to a call from Maxwell, Leo and I had a fierce argument. I looked at Leo on the pillow, breathing evenly, his closed eyelashes casting long shadows under the warm yellow table lamp. Little did I know, the Leo that day was actually not asleep. When I turned around after hanging up the phone, Leo stood behind me with a cold face, his rigid body showing stiffness. Separated by a glass door on the balcony, his emotions had sunk to a terrifying silence. Is there something you're hiding from me, some affair between you and him? I've tolerated it once or twice, how far are you going to push it? Clutching my phone tightly, I felt wronged in an instant. Do you really not trust me like this? Haven't I been working tirelessly for you? Busy cheating on me? A shot pierced my chest, shattering something inside, blood and flesh blurred. I coldly chuckled, feeling it was incredibly unfair. Are you and her so innocent? His calm was quickly replaced by anger, the crimson at the corner of his eyes no longer restrained. I won't let you speak of her like that. But in that second, he realized his mistake, his mouth twitched with brewing words, yet no apology came. Looking at the person by my side on the pillow, I shook my head in disappointment. Yes, from beginning to end, only I have been humble, so excuse me for not staying. I brushed past him, heading towards the door. His voice carried a threat. If you step out of this door today, we're done. In this unequal love, even breaking up was such an undignified way, I had had enough. I didn't even look back. If it's over, it's over, I've been wanting to break up with you for a long time. Not sure which one of us was more stubborn, until a loud slamming of the door behind us, neither of us said a second word. Chapter 9 I know, what Maxwell and I are is irrelevant, Leo's heart hasn't been with me for a long time. Maxwell is my high school classmate. If I didn't know he was an expert in men's diseases, I wouldn't have bothered him. Clearly, under our tacit understanding, Leo's condition was improving step by step. But Leo couldn't wait at all, his whole heart was with Tessa. Even though Leo was almost jealous, to the point of madness the first time he met Maxwell. But standing next to him was Tessa. The cafe was bustling that day, I sat in the farthest corner, sobbing softly because Leo and I's child was being revived once again. I cried and asked Maxwell. If it can't be cured, he won't be able to accept it. Maxwell's large hand gently patted my back, comforting me. But all of this was seen through by Leo, who suddenly appeared. I thought you said you were going to see your girlfriend? What are you doing here? I raised my head, eyes swollen, a tired look in my eyes. I'm seeing a friend, you. My gaze stopped at Tessa, who was elegantly dressed beside Leo. Leo's eyes seemed like a declaration of war, a hint of jealousy, as his hand firmly grasped Tessa's slender waist. I'm also meeting a friend, he said. A barely noticeable smile appeared on Tessa's lips. Maxwell's eyes were filled with speechlessness. We are true friends, but whether you two are true friends, I don't know. After saying this, Maxwell took my hand and was about to leave this place of gossip. In the next moment, Leo's hand tightly clutched my wrist, snatching me away from Maxwell. He swiftly made his way through the crowd, pulling me along, causing me pain. Chapter 10 In the parking lot, he pushed me into the car, stepping on the gas and driving away from there. Silent all the way, when we entered the house, he exploded completely, leaning down and biting my shoulder fiercely. The pain on my shoulder tugged at my nerves, and I pushed him away heavily. His deep eyes seemed to be wrapped in layers of unwillingness. I never knew you had such an intimate male friend. I felt the same emotions. Tit for tat, you said you were working overtime, working at a cafe. 
His slender hand ran back and forth through his silky black hair, each movement exuded extreme irritability. She has been going through a rough time recently. As a friend, I was comforting her. Unlike you, making me sick with his hands all over your back. Before I could say anything, he leaned in again, and I kept backing away. Eventually, we both fell onto the soft sofa, falling into this uncontrollable emotional turmoil. I've said it, you can only be mine for the rest of your life. From that moment on, I realized that this relationship was abnormal, but I couldn't completely break away from it. Because Leo was once the redemption in my life. The first body he officially dissected as a forensic pathologist was my mother's. That year, my mother was inexplicably burned to death at home. My mother's nasal cavity and lungs were filled with black smoke, so they determined that my mother's cause of death was simply an accident. But I knew, my mother's death was definitely not an accident. Before that, my mother witnessed a gang committing a crime, without thinking twice, she called the police. Luckily, the gang was captured. Unfortunately, from that day on, my mother seemed to be terrified and kept talking nonsense. She said it wasn't that simple, she kept repeating about the nine-headed snake under the moonlight. Chapter 11 I didn't know what she meant by all that. During that time, she kept saying someone was following her. Rumors about my mother's improper behavior started spreading nearby, saying my mother raised me by selling herself. The day before my mother was burned to death, she held my hand and said. If I die, you have to believe, it's definitely not an accident. I thought that this admonition was just like every other delusion she had, until I saw her charred body being carried out by someone. The criticisms were overwhelming, all saying that my mother committed suicide out of guilt from a romantic dispute. I knelt on the path Leo took to and from work, kneeling in front of him, begging him to give my mother justice. The moonlight cast a long shadow of Leo, as he lifted his foot to leave. But in the moment he saw my face clearly, he helped me up. Leo put in all his efforts to request a re-examination, eventually finding some clues. They found neat incisions on the burnt neck. In other words, before my mother was burned to death, her throat had been slashed. He returned to my almost completely burnt home, collecting all the hair and fingerprints he could find. In those pieces of evidence that did not belong to us, they found the culprit. The culprit admitted that it was to avenge my mother and also admitted that those rumors were spread by him. My mother was not a bad person, her wrongful case was finally overturned, and Leo became famous because of this. At that time, I was struggling repeatedly in the low point of my life, without any spirit, and Leo became my lifesaver. Leo, who initially avoided me, started to take the initiative. He helped me arrange my mother's funeral, took me out for a trip to relax. He accompanied me to see the sea, watched the sunrise and sunset, went to Tibet to see the Padala Palace. I always thought I had met a god, until later. I found out that my first love and him looked so alike. Chapter 12 No wonder that night, his eyes, cold as ice and snow, melted in an instant when he saw my face. But I always felt that the seemingly pure Tessa was not simple at all. Two days after the conflict caused by Maxwell, I hired a private detective to investigate Tessa's background. Sure enough, the detective told me that Tessa's sudden appearance was very strange in itself. Different from her surface purity, the people she contacted privately were all big shots involved in illegal businesses. And these people happened to have had conflicts of interest with Leo's parents. I sensed something was wrong, so I drove to the road where Leo's parents had their accident. This road that disappeared into the valley was often frequented by many shepherds. I asked one after another, all of them knew nothing about what happened that day. Until one dark-skinned shepherd hesitated, I quickly took out a wad of cash from my bag and handed it to him. He licked his lips, looking somewhat troubled. I didn't even know if I should report it. That day, I was herding sheep on the mountaintop, and I saw a group of people below acting suspiciously, holding something like an air gun in their hands. After they aimed at the car's tires, the car lost control and flipped down the valley. I was so scared at that time, I just crouched there and didn't dare move. My blood was boiling, suppressing my emotions, I hurriedly asked. Do you have any other clues? He scratched his head. I think I saw them bury the air gun under that big rock. 
Following his finger, I rushed down. Ignoring everything else, I dug through the slightly damp soil with my bare hands, until finally, a corner of black metal appeared. When I went back to find the shepherd with the evidence, he was lying face down in the puddle, his blood staining the entire water hole red. There was a dull thud on the back of my head, followed by a sharp pain that made my head spin. As I numbly collapsed, the last thing I saw was a pair of red high heels. Chapter 13 In search of the truth for Leo, my life quietly ended in this silent mountain. And Leo, was deeply in love with the person he loved, deeply entwined. Leo and Tessa went to the small restaurant they used to frequent during their first love. When ordering, Leo specifically told the boss not to include cilantro. Tessa's eyes were full of surprise. It's been 10 years, and you still remember I don't eat cilantro. Leo's expression was gentle as water. If you care, all these are subconscious behaviors, just like our breathing, no need to deliberately do it. So that's how it was, all his perfunctory actions towards me were because he didn't care. On my last birthday, Leo told me he had a surprise for me. I prepared a large table of dishes in advance, along with a small cake, eagerly waiting for him to give me my birthday surprise. When he opened the door, I saw him empty-handed, but he pulled out a certificate from his bag, excitedly telling me that the surprise was that he had won another award. I was genuinely happy for him, but also genuinely a bit disappointed, and in the end, I managed to squeeze out a smile. Wow. You're amazing. It wasn't until he saw the cake on the table that he looked somewhat stunned, quickly apologizing, saying he had been too busy and forgot. I watched him hurriedly put on his shoes, heading outside. In just half an hour, he came back with a bouquet of flowers and a pearl necklace. If he cared, he could have prepared everything before coming home in that half hour. I didn't understand, all of his actions fit the standard of a considerate boyfriend. But everything was too rational, rational like a program. Yet, when he was with Tessa, all his actions flowed so naturally. Perhaps, that's what love truly is. Tessa took a bite, revealing a satisfied smile. She suddenly asked. By the way, do you remember our old promise? Leo's gaze froze, staring at the oil-slicked soup bowl, as if memories were surfacing. What was he thinking? Had he forgotten what the promise was? Chapter 14 Finally, he snapped out of it and nodded. I remember, to take you to see the sea, watch the sunrise and sunset, go to Tibet to see the Patala Palace. So that's how it was, so that's how it was. I was just a puppet experiencing life for Tessa, fulfilling with her the promises she and Leo had never fulfilled. In those happy days, Leo saw Tessa's figure through me. My heart was beating violently, and my soul, like a distorted phantom, began to sway. After immense pain, my hands became half-transparent again. Is it my heart that has died, or is it time for me to leave? Tessa leaned on Leo's shoulder. Let's find a time to finish all this. Leo, as if just recovering from a trance, put down his chopsticks tastelessly, and said. Let's talk about it later. Tessa's smile suddenly faded, but she still held onto his arm. Under the bright streetlights, he and Tessa reluctantly bid farewell. When the door opened, the inside was no longer as brightly lit as before. There was no longer me welcoming him, helping him out of his suit, reminding him to drink the soup I made if he felt hungry. Leo's fingers fumbled back and forth at the switch on the door edge several times before finally turning on the light. On the dining table, the bottle of balloon flower had withered. Leo loved balloon flowers the most. Although I was allergic to fresh flowers, I would change to new balloon flowers every morning. Later, I learned that the balloon flower symbolizes regret, representing hopeless love. Being with me was Leo's reality, while Tessa was the love he couldn't have. Perhaps tired, Leo loosened his tie, pulled it off, and then lay back on the sofa. The living room light flowed into his pupils, and after a slight daze, he unlocked his phone screen, the page stopping at our final WeChat conversation. It used to be me initiating contact with him. He replied seriously to every message, but he never initiated contact with me. Chapter 15 Leo lit a cigarette, exhaled a smoke ring, then as if making a huge decision, he began typing. Are you still sulking at me? After sending it, 
he threw his phone onto the sofa and closed his eyes. But after a long time, he didn't receive my reply. Perhaps angry at my indifference, he bent down again to retrieve his phone, typing and deleting on the screen. Find a time to move your things out. At that moment, I couldn't tell if he was provoking me or being sincere. But I would never give him an answer in this lifetime. Or I can leave. He was still testing. The lights in the opposite building went out one by one, and Leo's gaze suddenly landed on a business card in the corner of the coffee table. He pulled it out in confusion, and upon reading the name Maxwell on the card, he suddenly seemed to lose his composure. The veins on the back of his hand were exposed as he tore the card to pieces and angrily threw it under the table. Finally, he picked up his phone again and sent a message. Fine, no reply, huh? Don't ever come back. Contradictorily, that night I witnessed him tossing and turning once more. As dawn broke, Leo's phone suddenly beeped with a message notification. He sprang up like a startled spring, scrambling towards his phone with both hands and feet. But upon seeing that the message was from Tessa, the emotion in his eyes turned out to be disappointment. Tessa asked him. Shall we go to the Japanese restaurant I've always wanted to try today? This Japanese restaurant was also one that Leo and I used to frequent. Leo opened his arms and let himself fall into a messy pile of blankets, taking a deep sigh. Tessa invited him, shouldn't he be happy? He stared at the ceiling for half an hour before finally picking up his phone and replying, okay. As he picked up the menu, Leo murmured the dishes that I usually love to eat. Chapter 16 After the dishes were served, Tessa looked at him blankly. Actually, every time I come to this Japanese restaurant, I always order ramen. Didn't we used to order it frequently when we were together? I don't like eating raw food. Leo didn't say much, just handed her the menu. Then order for yourself. Tessa seemed to realize the change in Leo's mood, beneath the menu, her eyes playfully watched Leo's reaction. You know, do you think Claire and Maxwell are also dating like us? Leo's thin lips slightly parted, and the knuckles of his hand became more distinct due to the tight grip. He didn't say anything, picked up his chopsticks, and stuffed a piece of raw fish into his mouth. He didn't like eating these either. No matter how many times we came, I made him try, and he always had a reluctant expression, directly refusing. But this time, he couldn't suppress the urge to spit out the food he ate hastily. Tessa hurriedly said. Slow down, why are you in such a hurry? Leo put down his chopsticks with a snap, wiped the corners of his mouth expressionlessly, and coldly said. There's an emergency at work, I have to go back. Leaving the restaurant, he tried calling my best friend but couldn't get through. He opened my WeChat profile picture again, the tone surprisingly tinged with a hint of pleading. I was wrong this time, can you come back? His steps halted upon seeing a pet store nearby. The adorable cats and dogs inside were jumping up and down excitedly as people entered. Leo's gaze passed indifferently over these little creatures, eventually stopping at a small corgi. The first time I entered this store, I eagerly looked at that little corgi. But Leo said. I don't like these things. I could only give up. A female employee greeted him and immediately recognized him upon seeing Leo. I remember you, you're the handsome guy who came with his wife that day. Don't you not want to have a dog? Leo hesitated for a moment. My wife likes it. The employee instantly smiled mischievously. Oh dear, I just accidentally got a taste of relationship envy. Ah. Uh. Love. Leo turned his head and asked seriously. What exactly is love? The two employees glanced at each other and joked. You're really funny, isn't your wife your love? Being able to change for her, to accept everything I don't like. Leo smiled, a tender warmth in his gaze. Yes, I want her to come home to see things she loves, to see the changes I've made for her. Chapter 17 When Leo left the pet shop, holding the corgi, his expression had never been so resolute. Later, Tessa continued inviting Leo out enthusiastically. In the past, no matter how busy he was, he would join her, but now, Leo turned down every single invitation. After feeding the little corgi, he went to the DR jewelry counter in the mall. 
His eyes traced over the rows of diamonds symbolizing commitment, as though envisioning the future. It's my wife's birthday soon. What gift would you recommend? She prefers something understated. I had once shown him rings I found online, holding them up to him for his opinion. He simply brushed my ring finger lightly, gave a perfunctory nod, and moved on. But now, he had my ring size memorized. The sales assistant smiled, saying. Your wife's ring size is the smallest I've seen. Her fingers must be long and slender, she must be a beauty. He nodded dazedly. Yes, she's very beautiful. The ring would take a few days to arrive. Eagerly, he sent me the ring order confirmation. This is my sincerity. Don't be mad anymore. Let's get married next month. As always, I wouldn't reply. My feelings for him had completely died. That ring was no longer something I desired. Returning home, Leo knelt down and retrieved Maxwell's business card from under the table. Piece by piece, he reassembled it and finally got the full phone number. When the call connected, Leo's underlying hostility toward Maxwell immediately showed. You should have Claire come back. Tell her if she doesn't return to marry me soon, I just might change my mind. He had automatically assumed that my disappearance was because I'd run off with Maxwell. Maxwell's voice was filled with anger. Is this how you usually talk to her? You jerk. Leo despised Maxwell deeply, and his anger flared as if someone had struck a raw nerve. What's your problem? Maxwell replied without holding back. You are the problem, you're sick, and it's a sickness that probably shouldn't be cured. Chapter 18 Leo abruptly hung up, his chest heaving with rage. He threw his phone to the floor, venting his frustration into the air. Fine. If you don't want to marry me, then watch me marry someone else. Leo always followed through on his words, so it didn't surprise me one bit when he took the ring to Tessa. It was as if the ring had been meant for her all along. In the days that followed, Leo drank himself into a stupor. Each time his mind began to clear, he would tilt his head back and down more liquor to numb himself again. When Leo, tipsy and unsteady, knelt down on one knee, he didn't even have a chance to say his vows before Tessa covered her face, tears of joy streaming down. I finally waited for this day. Leo carefully took out the ring, but as it slipped onto Tessa's finger, it got stuck at the first knuckle. They both realized something was wrong. Tessa tried to force it further down, but it stayed jammed in place. Leo suddenly seemed to pull back from his impulse. Sorry, I'll propose another day. Tessa wasn't willing to let go. It's fine. I'll lose a little weight, and it'll fit. But Leo still pulled the ring back. This isn't right for you. So, Leo, what exactly do you want? Chapter 19 Unwilling to give up, Tessa wrapped her arms around Leo's neck. The scent of liquor mixed with Tessa's alluring perfume filled the air, intoxicating enough to tempt any grown man. Tessa pulled her dress off her shoulder, and at that moment, it felt like a jolt of electricity surged through me, I saw a hydra tattoo on her chest. Memories of my mother's frenzied murmuring started playing over and over in my head. The pieces began to come together, the hydra tattoo in the moonlight from that night, Tessa's calculated moves to approach Leo's parents' enemy, the high heels I saw before I died. Could all of this evil have been orchestrated by Tessa? Before I had time to fully think it through, Tessa's gaze grew even more seductive. As I prepared to close my eyes in disappointment, Leo staggered back and pushed Tessa away. I'm drunk, and I got carried away. I'll come see you tomorrow. The moment Leo disappeared, all emotion vanished from Tessa's face. In a cold voice, she said into the phone. He's reconsidering. Hold off for now. Wait a little longer. If he still can't forget about that wench, we'll get rid of him the same way we did his parents. After hanging up, Tessa murmured. Leo, this is all the debt your father owed. I really love you. Don't force my hand. The day Leo was set to submit his resignation, he ran into Maxwell at the police station entrance. Leo barely gave him a glance and continued on his way. Maxwell grabbed his arm. Claire hasn't contacted me in a long time. Aren't you worried? 
Leo's eyes were filled with fatigue. She probably left because she thinks she can't have children. But his self-deprecating smile only fueled Maxwell's anger. Clenching his fist, Maxwell punched Leo squarely in the face. Leo fell backward like a puppet with its strings cut, too defeated even to try to resist. Chapter 20 She's over three months pregnant. How can she not be able to have children? The one with fertility issues has always been you. She cared about your feelings, quit her job, and secretly worked on restoring your health every day, and this is how you repay her? What? Leo was finally shaken, then sprang up like a madman, grabbing Maxwell by the collar. Say that again. That's impossible. Three months pregnant, perhaps only now did Leo truly connect the corpse to me. Maxwell's silence was more deafening than any words. Frantically, Leo reached into his pocket for his phone, dialing my best friend with trembling hands. As soon as the call connected, Leo almost shouted. Claire's with you, right? I can hear her voice. Let me talk to her. My friend was just as baffled. Isn't she with you? Leo grew more desperate. You're lying to me, aren't you? Please. Tell her I'll apologize on my knees if she just comes back. I'm on vacation abroad with my boyfriend. The signal here is bad, why would I lie? Just then, her boyfriend's impatient voice cut in. Are you done? Hang up already. Leo staggered back in disbelief, and as he fell to the floor, the ring slipped out of his pocket. He froze, picking up the ring, then stumbled toward the morgue. When he pulled out the drawer holding my body, a misty chill struck his face. He held up the ring and reached toward my fingers. In those seconds, what was he thinking? That the ring wouldn't fit, that this defiled body wasn't his fiancé's? Or was he hoping the ring would fit perfectly, and that his obstacle with Tessa was finally gone? It didn't matter. I had no expectations left. The ring slid over each knuckle, finally resting snugly at the base of my finger. He couldn't believe it, he pried open my toes, and the unique red mole between them broke him completely. Chapter 21 Leo's mouth opened, as if to scream, yet no sound escaped. A man who had always seen death lightly was now utterly terrified by a single corpse. His face turned red from holding his breath, and at last, he slapped himself hard. I'm a beast. I'm a monster. I'm not even human. Tears and snot mixed as he lay on my cold body, sobbing uncontrollably. Claire, I'm so sorry. He said, then continued slapping his own face. Turning, he saw the scalpel on the autopsy table. What was he going to do? He lost control, rushing over and grabbing the scalpel. As the blade drew close to his neck, there was a faint thud from inside my drawer. According to forensic science, it was a natural nerve reaction in the corpse. But for Leo, an atheist, it was as if he wished for this lifeless body to come back to life, as he frantically tried to revive me with CPR. But it was all in vain, and he laughed hysterically, then suddenly seemed to realize something. Claire, do you still have any unfulfilled wishes? The person who killed me was still at large, how could I rest in peace? Leo tried logging into my WeChat. After many failed attempts, he entered his own initials and birth date. The login was successful, and suddenly, all my unread messages flooded in. Aside from him, the person who had sent me the most messages was the private detective. You were right about your suspicions. I found out more about Tessa's background. After she and her mother left the city years ago, her mom remarried a well-known local gangster. Her mom always saw her as a burden, and over the years, she's lived off various unsavory men. A few years ago, she managed to latch onto a prominent figure, a ruthless man. When he mysteriously died, she inherited everything. The death of Leo's parents was probably her doing. I called you, but you didn't pick up. Are you okay? Please be careful. I can't be involved in this anymore, I'm done. I don't want to risk my life just to make money. Goodbye. May we never meet again. Chapter 22 And all of Leo's messages were unread. The last one was him threatening me, telling me he was going to marry someone else. 
Leo clenched his fist and slammed it onto the table repeatedly until his hand was a bloody mess, leaving long, bloody streaks across the surface. After a while, once he had calmed down, he dialed Officer Chen's number. You were the one in charge of Tessa's father's suicide case. I have a few questions for you. The facade of Tessa, that pure white jasmine, had finally been torn away. Tessa's father had died because of Leo's father back then, so naturally, Tessa despised him. And when I uncovered the truth, Tessa silenced me. With Leo's help, she had escaped any consequences. Leo himself had destroyed all the evidence about my death. With a deadened look in his eyes, Leo slipped the scalpel into his pocket and sent Tessa a message. Where are you right now? I need to see you. Tessa replied instantly. All right, let's meet at your place this afternoon. When Tessa knocked on the door, Leo had already been sitting on the sofa, waiting, for a long time. She held a large bag filled with household items, each in pairs. She set the items on the table and began talking excitedly with Leo about their future. Leo turned and locked the door. He poured a glass of water and handed it to Tessa, who smiled as she took it and drank it all in one gulp. Tessa tried to pull Leo to sit beside her, but he remained motionless, rigid. Where is Claire's head? What are you talking about? Tessa looked at him in disbelief, her hand moving toward her phone. Leo watched her fidgeting with her phone. It wasn't until Tessa realized her message wasn't sending, just spinning endlessly, that Leo gave a cold laugh and said. Did you think I wasn't prepared? There's already a signal jammer in the room. Right now, it's just you and me. I'm warning you, tell me everything. Tessa stood up in anger, but as soon as she rose, she collapsed weakly to the floor. Her gaze landed on the glass of water Leo had handed her when she arrived. Chapter 23 I'm a forensic doctor. You know I'm a professional, making you disappear from this world without a trace is easy for me. Tessa tried to feign vulnerability, but Leo had already picked up her phone, flipping through it. Dropping her act, she sneered. I never thought you'd do this to me. I've fought my way through so much, survived all kinds of storms, only to fall in the end, to love. Love, by killing everyone I cared about? Leo's tone suddenly intensified. Claire's only mistake was loving you, and being too curious. And your parents? They deserved it, they ruined my family, drove my dad to his death, and left me with nothing. If not for them, we'd already be married with children by now. I hated your father, and I envied the life you got to live. Disgust was etched across Leo's face. You left in such a hurry back then, I never knew the real reason. But I asked Captain Chen, and it was your parents who tried to frame mine, to take over the company. My father only fought back. Your father couldn't handle the consequences of his own actions, and ended up committing suicide. I don't care. If it weren't for your father, I'd still be innocent. We were so close to being together, but Claire, the meddling fool, ruined everything. They all deserve to die. Leo wiped his scalpel, his voice steely. I'll ask again. Where is Claire's head? <laughs> it's long gone, fed to the fish in the sea. The scalpel came down, piercing Tessa's hand. She screamed in pain, sweat breaking out across her forehead. She spat at him, sneering. Don't act so noble with me. When you were with me, did you ever consider her feelings? When I pretended to be kidnapped, didn't you waver for my sake? Her words left Leo momentarily stunned, though he still protested. I admit, when you came back, I was shaken. But the more time I spent with you, the more I realized Claire was the one I truly loved. Chapter 24 Tessa let out a mocking laugh. If you'd known that body was Claire's, and you had to trade her life for mine, what would you have chosen? Even I wanted to know the answer. I would have taken you down with me, as her burial companion. Tessa spat on Leo's face. You hypocrite. My only mistake was hesitating back then, getting caught before I could destroy the evidence. If I had the chance to choose again, I'd kill you without a second thought, and tear Claire's body to pieces. In Leo's eyes, there was only a desire for killing left. 
I will make you understand the pain Claire has experienced. He stabbed Tessa in the back of her neck with a knife, just like how Tessa shattered my vertebrae. As blood sprayed out, Tessa unwillingly stared with eyes wide open, but no sound came out of her anymore. He turned the scalpel and directly removed Tessa's head. That scene was no different from mine. In the mess, Leo picked up a pen and wrote three pages of a confession letter. It was filled with regret, requesting justice for me, and returning my innocence. When Captain Chen arrived in response to the alarm, Leo raised his head and drank the water in his hand. Captain Chen looked at the earthly hell before him, shocked and speechless for a while. As the handcuffs were put on Leo's wrists, he calmly said. The whole story is in my confession letter. You must clear Claire's name for me. She is innocent. Tessa's phone contains many clues about this criminal gang. Take them down, and Claire can rest in peace. His voice was tired, and his body slowly bent down. I want to go. See Claire? But Leo, I don't want to see you at all. I watched as he was taken into the ambulance, all the doctors bustling around to attach various instruments to him. My figure began to sway, gradually dissipating in the wind. As the instruments emitted the continuous a drip sound symbolizing death, my figure completely vanished. So Leo, even in death, let's not meet again. In the next life, or the one after that, let's be wild chrysanthemums covering the hills. But I won't be your wife. In the next life, among the blooming mountain flowers, I will face towards the sunlight. 